I'm Jordan Eberhardt. This is Cameron. This is Robbie from The Contortionist. This is Eric from The Contortionist. This is Joey from The Contortionist, and you're geeking out to Gear Gods. What's up, guys? This is Robbie from The Contortionist. We are here in Anaheim with Entheos, Monuments, and Sleep Makes Waves. Uh, we're playing tonight at the Chain Reaction. Nice little spot we always hit. Um, I'm going to run you guys through my gear a little bit. Um, so starting down here, got this MIDI controller, kind of uh, controls pretty much everything. Um, I leave a few things out to uh, control myself. Um, these two, I um, actually have another one of these in the rack. Um, and these are kind of magic when you throw them on the clean channel as well. Um, Sweet pickup booster from Seymour Duncan. Uh, I, I use this for uh, some clean boosts every here and there. Um, got this vice grip compressor, which is always on. Uh, just makes everything nice and compressed, I guess. And then this thing is kind of the, the brain of all my delays. Uh, I've got it in the MIDI chain, so I've got you know custom delays for each song, for each part and stuff. Um, and then a volume pedal, pretty simple. Um, there's some utility stuff down here on the bottom. Got my pedal power and an audio buffer. And this cool little patch bay. This board, by the way, is made by a company called Temple Audio. I'll show you their logo right there. Come down here, I've got a uh, Mesa dual rectifier down here. Um, Amp can, does does no wrong. Uh, clean channel rules. I use the red and the orange channel for different stuff. Um, and here in the drawer, we've got got this Voodoo Lab control switcher, which uh, controls the amp. Uh, the MIDI the MIDI rater out there, the Rocktron, sends MIDI to this thing and to this thing. Um, this changes the channel on the amp, turns the effects loop on and off, and whatnot. Uh, in this Rocktron uh, Patchmate Loop 8, I've got some pedals in there. Um, got this, like I said earlier, this Mesa Grid Slammer. Um, sometimes I run them both at the same time on a clean channel, and it's kind of a cool uh, low gain solo kind of stuff. Uh, Maxon PAC9 uh, chorus pedal. Very sweet. Uh, TC Electronics uh, Hall of Fame Mini. I think right now I'm using the. Uh, Guthrie Govan um, uh, Spring Reverb, uh, which is cool. Um, and then just a noise suppressor to keep the from to a minimum. And then on this door, I'm doing this uh, Palmer. Um, basically, it, it just lets me take the, a direct signal from my amp into this thing, uh, out to the PA, and then into my cab, which is pretty cool. Uh, we, for years, we've mic'd the cabs, and which is great. And I think doing both uh, direct and mics is probably the best way to go. But this tour, we're just doing direct, and sounds great. And then uh, up here, we got some guitars, some some sweet Ibanez customs. Uh, this one's just kind of a stock model with a with a pickguard on. They threw that on there for me. Some nice little perloid tuners. There's a set list. I don't want you to see that. Another one of these, uh, LA Custom Shop. Um, I think this one's called the RG2727. It's got uh, all my guitars have Seymour Duncans in them. Um, nice simple headstock. And then they were kind enough to let me check out this uh, RGD. I wanted to mess around with a little bit of a longer scale uh, for our drop tune. We use a G sharp tuning. And the uh, G string is also tuned down another half step. So on a normal scale guitar, it gets a little uh, floppy, which is never good. Um, so this keep it's a, I believe it's a 26, 26 inch scale or something like that. So it's a little, 26 and a half, a little bit longer than normal. So uh, yeah, that's pretty sweet. And then uh, this one, this one's cams. This is also a RG2727. Nice uh, Japanese model. And um, Mesa cabs. That's about it for stage right. What's going on guys? This is Cameron. 
the contortionist. We're here in Anaheim and I'm just gonna show you what we got going on here. It's pretty, uh, it's not necessarily the, the newest, most high-tech stuff on the market, but uh, we kind of just have acquired stuff over the years and, and uh, I'll just show you what we're working with here. Just kind of standard MIDI controllers from the 80s and you know, basically switches through all my, you can see the names there, just funny stuff, whatever I need to do. I got like a, just 15 sounds really. I don't bank, have banks or anything. I just use 15 sounds. I feel like for an hour to an hour and a half of music, is, you really don't need any more than, than that really. But I just, I'm just a sucker for spring reverb. And so, yeah, it's just pretty simple. But I just, I'm always running this, this pedal at all times. Um, the tone press is Barber. It's an Australian company, but uh, yeah, I just, I've always had it for, you know, I like all sorts of toys, but this is just what I've had and what I, you know, I like the transparency of it, I guess. And so, and then this thing really uh, does a whole lot that you most, most people wouldn't really think, you know. It doesn't look like that much fun, but it saves a lot of, uh, makes it sound a lot better. So, um, especially when you're running through all these cables and, you know, you got 50 feet of cable or whatnot. Uh, yeah, tuner, um, volume pedal. And uh, yeah, just use this kind of as like a safety net, just so I know, you know, that's basically mute and that's a visual thing. I can see that it's muted <laughs> where, you know, and I just use it like a volume, uh, volume knob on the guitar. Um, and yeah, I'm just using this old 90s two channel uh, dual rectifier. I've had it for, you know, a long time. And it just, I like the simplicity of it and it just sounds the way I like it. I don't know, as far as, uh, I, use, I like to use all sorts of stuff, but this is kind of, this is my uh, bread and butter. It's what I'm most comfortable with, at least, you know, running, uh, making sure I got my effects sent in the right levels and everything. Uh, it's a G major unit for uh, some digital effects that I run inside the amp, uh, inside the effects loop. Just little things that, if it wasn't there, it wouldn't be the end of the world, but, uh, you know, it helps. I'm a sucker for spring reverb, so. Um, yeah, and then this thing actually is just a patch patch bay, so it basically just switches between all these pedals. Um, and that way they're all in front of the, you know, guitar in front of the amp, but this way I just, you know, it makes it easier for me to make multiple switches and stuff and not have to worry about, you know, a sequence or something. I can just hit one button and know that that's going to be the sound. Um, yeah, Univibe is probably my favorite, uh, it's one of my favorite sounds, just eclectic, you know. Other than that, I just got analog chorus for some shimmery stuff. Um, I've got these uh, tube screamers. The Robert Keeley did a mod. It's a bake mod, um, and then this is just his regular uh, uh, mod. And yeah, I just I use this this for on top of the clean channel for some like Texas you know blues tones, and then I use this in front of the red channel um, sometimes. Just anytime it's going to be kind of more modern, chung chung, riffy, you know. I'll, I'll throw that on there just to make this less flubby. And so it kind of dials it in and makes it a little bit sharper and uh, a little bit more cut. And yeah, it makes it sound more metal. But, uh, and then just the noise gate, probably my least favorite pedal, but it, you know, you have to have one if you're screeching and hollering, so. Uh, and delay pedal yeah, on front. So I, I run delays in here as well, but I run a delay out here in front for specific parts like uh, anytime I'm spilling over with effects and I want to be able to drop the volume pedal down while I'm switching, going to some other things, this will be on, just kind of spill over, you know, ring, stuff rings out nice and nice and neat. And uh, yeah, that's really it. If you can walk around the back. I don't know how much room we got here, but. How about this cab clone? Oh, the cab clone, yeah. We just started using these on this tour. Um, we used them for our rediscovered stuff, actually, when we were doing some of that live stuff. But uh, yeah, we normally would mic up the cabinet, and this time we just, you know, we're not playing the biggest stages, so it's kind of any room we can get, you know, on stage is much better, and it's just a little bit easier, you know. It sounds great, direct front of the house, nice and clear. But uh, yeah, not any better than a mic, I would say, but helps a lot for as far as keeping everything nice and neat and just easier, you know. Basically, I've just got some uh, Voodoo Lab stuff where I've got it all kind of separated. That way it's basically, you know, you can get units all in one and just have rack units that do everything. But what I like about having everything separate is that here, if I need AC power, I can, I can draw it from here. If I need, you know, direct current, it's all right, you know, down here in the other Voodoo Lab and same with on the pedal board. 
but then also the control switcher is separate so it doesn't matter you know it's the, the rig doesn't have to be all together let's say I wanted to use a different amp or had to use a different amp one night um, it would all just I could just easily program it to anything I would need to you know and doesn't necessarily need any um, cables that that uh you know proprietary stuff it's just all MIDI in that way I can make whatever I need to make work work um, but yeah kind of looks like a mess and it needs to I need to clean it up a little bit but that's the least of my problems but cool. yeah um, so yeah it's basically just yeah MIDI switching you know analog rig but switched MIDI and that's a beautiful thing in my opinion yeah and this is uh, I actually just got this a few days ago in Texas when we were doing some festivals but uh, it's just an old 1527 that they uh, that they redid and I I just there's something about that finish uh, I used to have a, a an old RG 50 uh, 550 um, just a six string version of this it looked exactly like this and I just I, I ever since you know I wanted to have the same looking guitar but you know so finally I have it so and then the other one's kind of a just the same thing just a different finish both of them have all the same electronics it's a Seymour Duncan JB pickup in the bridge and a, a 59 in the neck and, uh, yeah just I like the Strat look and the old classic looks and uh, I think he he got that other guitar as well oh um, yeah but yeah, yeah, yeah got it, so. two ones that are identical like that and they're cool for the mahogany body <laughs> and maple top stuff but I like the I like the the, the bass wood's definitely like we play a lot of clean stuff and I like a slappy I like a really good clean tone I like it to be piano like and and not too broken up you know when it doesn't need to be so but yeah other than that it's pretty much what I'm what I'm rocking. Hey guys, uh, I'm Joey Baca from The Contortionist. Uh, I'm going to do a quick rundown of the kit. Um, we've got a uh, Tama Star Classic Babinga. Um, we got 8, 10, 12, uh, 16 toms, a uh, 20 inch kick drum, and then right here we got a, a 14 inch uh, Tama SLP uh, Black Brass. Um, all minor symbols, pretty sick. Um, over here, we've got uh, the X32 rack, basically runs the show, sort of. Uh, sends everybody their, uh, their monitor mixes, um, and we can adjust them wirelessly uh, with a phone or a tablet. So if I you know, want something louder or quieter, I just adjust these, these faders here. Uh, for sticks, I'm using Vic Firth. At the moment, I'm using 5B. My pedals are Iron Cobras. These are the, uh, the 2015 models, the redesign. They've got uh, this pretty cool redesign thingy down here. I don't know exactly what it's called, but apparently it uh, gives this, this hinge a lot more support because um, they've been known to be a little, little shaky in the past. Um, and they've also got, I don't know if you can see, but it's got a new redesigned beater. And yeah, these, the, the new Iron Cobras feel amazing. I've, I've, I have another pair of Iron Cobras from years ago and these just feel so much more fluid. Um, it's got a lightness to it, but it's still got weight you can throw around. So yeah, I really dig them. That's our router basically that sends all of our, uh, communicates with our devices in the X32. And then this guy is our, uh, um, our talkback uh, receiver for our front of house guy. So he's got a wireless mic that you can talk to us with. I'm Eric. I play keyboards for the contortionist. Um, I guess at the center of the rig is basically the laptop, uh, which runs our timeline, uh, run click to the drummer, and all my keyboard sounds and everything uh, all run on Ableton Live. Um, we have, uh, I guess, two movers and a couple panels and uh, some LEDs around the screen and a projector that are all programmed in the timeline here too, so it's kind of got a lot of stuff going on. Um, so my main controller, the only controller I'm using is a uh, Akai uh, MPK-88, which is uh, actually really fun to play because it's fully weighted 
and uh, so you can really dig in the piano parts and stuff like that. Um, running a lot of pads and uh, organs and heavy synths, which I decided to start using a uh, an outboard pedal loop with some uh, guitar pedals and overdrive and the delay this and this together are basically two of my favorite pedals um, for a lot of the heavy synth bass and like uh, delay noises and heavy drones and stuff like that. Um, let's see, I run stereo keys, stereo tracks to the house, um, lights, all through this rig. I guess that's pretty much everything. I wish I could show you some sounds right now, but I don't have anything, uh, I don't have stage sound. So, um, I guess plugins, I'm using a lot of uh, Omnisphere and Easy Keys. Uh, for piano and electric piano and uh, some organ um, and also the most of the more I guess analog and synthy synths are all done in diva usually I kind of I like to go there um, let's see a couple effects I use all the sound toy stuff really uh, crystallizer I use a ton with piano and uh, some time delays and everything uh, running the running the timeline on this machine actually makes it useful because I can get all my delays in sync. Generally with Ableton, you know, it's a balancing act of like figuring out how to make all these different things with the tracks and the lights and switch in between, you know, maybe 15 different sounds during the set, how to balance your RAM and memory and everything so that you're not taxing the computer too much. So a lot of times I'm turning things on and off as I go and mixing volume levels, relative levels of about three or four different sounds at once, um, which is actually, it's kind of, it's kind of weird. I, I don't have everything set up to change to a preset on the timeline, but I'm kind of able to be more creative with the tones and let, let some delays kind of go a little more wild and stuff like that. And so adds a lot of texture uh, to mix all the sounds live and everything. So um, I've actually been really impressed with what Ableton can handle you know, four, three or four pianos at once and a few pads and organs and everything. And sometimes it's still chugging along. So I don't know, it's kind of become a fun toy because when I started building this rig, I didn't really have, didn't really have a clear plan or a precedent really that, that was kind of doing all this at once. So it's been kind of an ongoing project. But. Hey guys, I'm Jordan Eberhardt, play bass for the contortionist. Uh, this is Gear Gods, and I'm going to start you off here with my uh, two bases I use for uh, tour. So these are uh, Ibanez Groove Lines. Um, I have a five and a six for two different tunings here. Uh, this specifically is a Japanese model uh, that great guys over at Ibanez sent over for me. Um, I use this in a A-sharp standard tuning, uh, and then I also have this custom uh, six string groove line uh, got the spalted maple top one of my favorite tops ever uh, this is a drop G sharp tuning so these uh, this one also weighs a crap ton more uh, as far as uh, the rest of the rig um, before I even get to the amp uh, I have my effects that run before it gets to the input of the amp. Um, it all starts off with this pedal right here, Dark Glass Vintage Deluxe. Definitely the most important pedal on my uh, board here. Uh, I run a drive signal probably about 60 or 70% of the set. Um, and it's great because it doesn't have overkill distortion. Uh, it still has a lot of low end um, and it's still really tight. It's cool, it's a very uh, versatile pedal. Um, Actually, before I do everything in order, these three, these are all made by a guy, um, Taylor Livingston. He's got his own uh, company called Iron Either. It's like a two-man operation. They make some of the greatest stuff, uh, very forward-thinking. Um, this right here is a, a fuzz. It's got a, a gate on it, too, so you can make it really tight. Um, this is his uh, octave synth pedal. It's actually got a lot of the... Um, circuitry from this OC2 right here, this boss, um, but it has a lot more options. You can actually add like square waves and uh, sawtooth and stuff to either the dry signal or the octave signal. It's really cool. Um, and then 
The last one I have of his is the Xerograph Deluxe. It's a uh, low pass filter um, that has like envelope capabilities. And I have this expression pedal actually controlling that. So it, uh, it basically um, changes the cutoff frequency. So, uh, you know, when you're playing it, you can kind of make like these cool little, I guess, wobbles, like dubstep type stuff, I guess. Um, and you can do these really cool sweeps. Uh, and then I have my Maxon chorus pedal. Um, I definitely use it more as an effect than just a little bit of color. Uh, and then I have this dedicated foot switch. Um, it's to my EBS. Uh, yeah, it's just just a plain old foot switch. <laughs> yeah. um, and then my actual rig is a EBS TD660, a uh, company out of Sweden making incredible stuff. Uh, and then I have my uh, Eden 8x10 cab I've had for probably close to eight or nine years. Very rugged still. So it gets the job done. Played probably five or six hundred shows with that thing. Um, yeah, it's it's a pretty old tuner. That's okay. Ain't nothing wrong with that. <laughs> As far as strings, uh, I use uh, Diodarios, Dia um, no picks. Right of choice, Phil Collins used it. I mean, come on, Phil Collins. Um, with a maple top, flame maple top. The serial number says it's from 2001. It looks pretty, 